Hello everybody, hope you're having a great start of your week. Um, this is the exercise of the week and we're going to cover ball curl variations. So uh, we're gonna cover the eccentric ball curl and the supine ball curl and shout out to a few of my clients uh, that I fortunately get to torture with this right now as we speak. But this is a great exercise and a lot of people, okay, why does that, why does that matter? Why can't I just target the hamstrings with other exercises? It's because when we look at running and just the overall uh, movement pattern, right? We need to, to propel the body. So we want to get hip extension, which uses glute maximus primarily, again, stabilizing the muscles around the core and the pelvis, glute maximus, hamstring as a secondary extender. That's kind of that pattern that we're using here. So with the ball curls, what I find is we can put ourselves in a position where we're requiring good setup and stability throughout the core. We're using the glutes to stay up into extension and then we're able to slowly load that hamstring. Um, for those of you, again, who've been running for a while, we know uh, hamstrings take a lot of stress, especially if we're doing a lot of hills or speed work and working to increase our speed. So we need to make sure we have the strength and resilience to withstand that. But at the same point, we can't just isolate the hamstrings without also taking into consideration the glutes. We need the glutes to be able to extend our hips. We can have really strong hamstrings. I just saw this with someone last week with the new evaluation. Um, no weakness whatsoever on the hamstrings from side to side, but always felt hamstring tightness. So as we look at the glutes, she was unable to really fully engage, to extend, to push off using that glute. So the hamstring, which should be a secondary hip extensor, was working a lot harder. So we wanna make sure we're not just working things in isolation. Those are good to a degree and at certain points of your, your training and, and your rehab, but we're tying things together in a way that's going to properly carry over to running. So I always like to start people with the eccentric version. Eccentric means lowering only, so we're not gonna pull back. Uh, I think a lot of you, again, early on, if you're doing this for the first time, uh, will be happy we're not pulling back just yet. You know, we're, we're doing the lowering, we're getting into a good position and we're, we're feeling the hamstrings. We're setting up with the core in the hips in the proper bridge position, but then we're using the hamstrings to lengthen away. So as I use a stability ball, this one actually is a little bit small for me, um, but the higher the ball, the harder, the lower the ball, the easier, the more inflated, the easier, the less inflated or unstable, the harder. So you need to find a good combination with the ball that works right. I find a lot of people uh, pulling the ball out of the closet or out of the exercise room they haven't used in years. It's lost its, its air pressure and it's really hard to stabilize on. So make sure you're pumping that ball up to a great degree so it works for you and you can do the exercise properly. Um, starting off, I'm gonna use my hands for assistance. Easier out wide, a little bit harder by your side, hardest up in the air. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, pull the ball towards me. So I'm in this flex position at the knees and the hips. I'm going to always take a deep breath before I start. So I want to, because in this position, the tendency to arch the back, and as I get up into the bridge, it's the same thing. So nice deep exhale. Let everything out of the lungs. Rib cage comes down. I'm engaging the core. It's helped me set up this canister position. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive up into a full hip bridge. When I say full, knees, hips, and shoulders are forming the straight line. A lot of people are stopping short. And then we're almost just, just isolating the hamstrings without getting the glutes to get us up into extension. That's getting back to that same thought process before when people are feeling really tight in their hamstrings, when it's not actually a hamstring issue, it's a glute issue. Okay, so need to make sure we're getting into full hip extension. Exhale. Rib cage down, core engaged. Got a nice set position here at the canister, but continuing to breathe, driving the hips all the way up into extension. Knees, hips, and shoulders are forming the straight line. And then from there, over five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Fully extended, dropping down, and I'm resetting. Exhale. You can see pretty annoying, right? I need to exhale every single time, set up my position. Hips up, core engaged, glutes, core, hamstrings, slow and controlled. That's the eccentric ball curl, right? So I don't have people do a lot of the eccentric only. It's like we're learning the position, we're starting to get the core, the glutes, and the hamstrings to work together in a very uh, cohesive way. And usually doing anywhere from 
two to three sets of four to eight repetitions potentially, and then we go to what I call the supine ball curl, which I'll show right now. Now, we're going to pull back as opposed to only lower the legs down. So now we're getting that concentric as well as the eccentric contraction here at the hamstrings. Setup is exactly the same. I always want to set up, and because I'm not doing the eccentric doesn't mean I start here now, because a lot of people start here and they end up arching the back. I'm going to start with that ball close. <sighs> Exhale, rib cage down, hips all the way up into extension. So now as I lower away, not as slow as before, but I lower away, legs are extended, pulling back, but you can see how my hips are driving up with the motion. A lot of times we see a tendency for people, a lot of people are doing hamstring curls like this. They're here in this position, their hips are dropped. That's isolation for the hamstrings. Not bad, but in this variation that I want to teach you, we're driving the hips up. We're keeping the glutes engaged. You have to think about we're holding a constant bridge position. <sighs> Rib cage down, core engaged, hips up nice and high. As I lower away, controlled, but as I pull back, as soon as I start to pull, my hips are already driving up and maintaining hip extension. Core, glutes, and then hamstrings are creating the motion. Okay, if you notice cramping in the hamstrings, that's not uncommon. Um, figure out if you're setting up properly, right? So this is where a lot of those uh, other exercises come into play, our dead bugs, our hip bridges, those things. If you're unable to do a dead bug or a hip bridge properly, you probably shouldn't jump to the ball curl yet because we want to be able to get the rib cage down, gauge the core, stabilize the rib cage, spine, and pelvis. As we get up into the ball curl, if we don't have those things, we have a tendency to arch the back, flare the ribs, which automatically shifts the stretch, stress into the hamstrings. These are the people that feel like they can't fully extend the hips. They feel tight hips, tight hamstrings, hamstrings cramp on them. So we need to make sure we get these things to work together first, and then we go into those ball curl variations. So eccentric ball curl, anywhere from two to three sets of four to eight repetitions. Supine ball curls, I do anywhere from two to three sets of four to so sometimes 12 repetitions, depending on the person, before we go to different single leg variations. But that should give you several months worth of exercise progressions that work on core stability, glute strength and hamstring strength that you can use the arms, use the arm less, get away from using the arms completely to add that core stability component, but a very good exercise that ties in hamstrings as it lengthens through the knee, glute strength and core stability together. Get okay, a big thing, a big area most runners need to work on, but making sure you understand the details of this movement get in the position properly so we're not just overloading the hamstring to get that cramping sensation. We're doing this and allowing everything to work to together in a nice cohesive way. So do me a favor, comment below, let me know, have you tried the ball curls before? How, have, how did you do with them? Um, any comments, feedback, questions, drop them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video today. And of course, and as always, have a great rest of your week. Thanks guys.